Welcome to Orange Weekly, presented by Crow South. Alongside Mike Waters, I'm Brent Dax. Coming up, we'll hear from Syracuse head coach Jim Beheim. Syracuse just went through a gauntlet and one game left in the regular season, the Clemson Tigers. And that means the ACC tournament is just around the corner this year in Charlotte. And that's just it, Mike. Here we are at the end of the regular season. The Clemson Tigers coming up. We'll preview that game here shortly. But I want to look back on this gauntlet that Syracuse just went through. Virginia, North Carolina, Duke, three and four three top teams in the ACC. All could be number one seeds in the NCAA tournament. So what did we learn from a stretch where Syracuse played well, led at halftime of all three of those games, but ultimately lost all three of those games? I think we found out what we kind of suspected all along anyway was that Syracuse is a pretty good team. They're just not up there with the upper echelon of the ACC or the country. And that's what you're looking at when you talk about Virginia, Duke, and North Carolina. As you mentioned, led at halftime of all three of those games. How many other teams in the conference or the country can do that? Including one of them on the road at North Carolina, leading them at halftime. So, yeah, I know fans are worried about the second halves and, and, and getting, especially like the Virginia game, getting blown off the floor. But rope in the other couple of games there around those big three you mentioned. Louisville at the beginning of them, which is a top 25 team, and Wake Forest on the road. And Syracuse wins both of those games. So you take those two wins, three leads at halftime, I think it shows that Syracuse is actually in a pretty good place. There were some extremes in those games, too. I brought up the officiating in the North Carolina game last week. Virginia, 18 of 25 from three-point range. That's just insane. But you said it, Mike. They were close enough, not the Virginia game as they pulled away, but close enough in those games to say, okay, we know you're not as good as those teams, but I think set you up for postseason success in a lot of different ways. Now, one guy who's going to be important for the Orange coming up is Pascal Chukwu, and He's been better the yeah. last two games, Mike. The numbers are there. Jim Beheim seems somewhat satisfied with how he's played, but we know that can go the other way quickly with Pascal. But let's just look at where he is now and, and can he continue this going into Syracuse's last regular season game and into postseason play. With Pascal, it all depends on his activity and his energy. His activity within the middle of that zone, is he active? Is he moving around, blocking shots, uh, altering shots, even the ones he doesn't get his hands on? When he does that, it seems to have a correlating effect on the offensive end. He goes down to the offensive end and he's out, he's setting screens, rolling to the basket a little better. And I think when he's playing better on defense too, his teammates will have a tendency to look for him on the offensive end and reward him. He played pretty well against Virginia. Eight, eight points and eight rebounds. That's a solid effort from the big guy. Speaking of important players, Mike, at the beginning of the season, we were all asked, you, me, Chris Carlson, Donna DeTota, Dennis Nett, the whole crew that covers Syracuse basketball here, to name as a part of a series of questions to preview the season the most important player. You said Elijah Hughes. I did. I said Tyus Battle. Now let's hit the You're reset button. With yep. the ACC tournament coming and wherever Syracuse ends up in the NCAA tournament, I ask that question again. Who is Syracuse's most important player in the postseason? Who are you going with? I'm going with O'Shea Brissett. I think they need O'Shea to score inside. I think they need him to be consistent. I think they are going to need him to hit a, a, an occasional three-pointer or two, step back, and hit that shot, which I've seen him make, you've seen him make, and he works on in practice and before the games a lot and can be pretty successful at. Uh, you know, I don't disagree with you. I think O'Shea is a key factor for Syracuse, especially with the way he's been playing this year. It hasn't been as consistent as he was as a freshman. He's, he's been kind of frustrating at, at times to watch. So I agree. But I'm going to stick with the guy I had in preseason, okay. I'm Elijah Hughes. He had a little bit of a slump there midway through the ACC part of the schedule, and I think he was getting a little tired. And when they had that week-long break between the NC State and Louisville games, I think he was able to get a little bit of rest. Get his, get his shot back together, get his legs underneath him. He's been playing really, really well and shooting the ball well ever since. And I think this team relies on the three-point shot, and they need him to make those. So I'm, I'm going to stick with my guy, Elijah. Mike and I discussed the gauntlet that Syracuse just went through. Let's hear what the head coach had to say about it. It's time for Syracuse Sound Bites with Jim Bayon. You play the, the one... What one, two, five teams in the country in ten days? We're not that. We're not as good as they are. You know that's the bottom line. We played pretty well against Duke, really well at North Carolina. We had a good first half. We're not better than these teams, and we're not even close to being better than these teams. But that doesn't mean you can't be a good team. Mike, it's been almost two months since Syracuse played Clemson the first time around, so let's go back to that 61-53 win by the Orange in the Carrier Dome. Anything you take from that game that Syracuse has to do the second time around? 
hardly anything. I think it's just been too much time, too much water under the bridge for both teams. Now, Clemson is still basically the same team that, that we saw back in January. They're going to rely heavily on Marquise Reed, their guard, high-scoring senior guard, 19 points a game. The, the other key guy for them is Elijah Thomas, their big center. Um, he's a double-double threat. And he did not have a good game against Syracuse. I would expect he's going to have a much better game down there. It's going to be his last home game. It's senior day. They got four seniors, three of them start. So I think it's going to be a lot of emotion down there at Clemson on well, Saturday. Well, not only that, Mike, this is a team that needs wins. They yeah. are on the bubble, and they need a, a win over Syracuse, as a matter of fact, would be significant for them. It may be a little damage in the ACC tournament to make sure they're on the right side of the bubble when Selection Sunday comes on St. Patrick's Day. So Syracuse has to be careful of that. So we're awaiting the NCAA tournament, but we've got the ACC tournament first, Mike. We know that Syracuse will be in the evening session as either a 6 or a 7 seed on Wednesday night. I think Syracuse is pretty safe, but it wouldn't hurt them to beat Clemson, win a game or two in the ACC tournament, and have a stress-free selection Sunday this year? I think of the games coming up, more important than the game at Clemson, which isn't going to hurt them if they lose, is that first game at the ACC tournament. It's going to be against some team that finished in the bottom six in the league, that's the game you kind of have. It's sort of like the Wake Forest game a week ago. Take care of business. Take care of business. Exactly right. And then they move into Thursday's quarterfinals, and you know they'll take whoever they get of the higher four seats. But even at that, I think they're still pretty safe. The bubble's incredibly weak. Uh, only a few bubble teams are taking business, taking care of business themselves. So you know we'll see. If Syracuse beats Clemson on the road, then maybe you're looking at a chance for them to get off of that eight nine line and get away from that number one seed in the second round. So we are not going to have Orange Weekly next week because Mike and the crew are going to be covering the ACC tournament. We will have an NCAA tournament preview for you coming down the road. But something to look out for is our video that we're producing about the 10th anniversary, can you believe it, Mike, no. of the Syracuse-Connecticut six-overtime game. So something to keep an eye out for next week. For now, for Mike Waters, I'm Brent Dax. That's Orange Weekly presented by Krause House.